This is LS11. Welcome along to another episode of LS11, your one-stop shop for all your League United uh, news, whatever else you want to call it, basically. Thanks very much uh, for downloading, for uh, listening live on the stream. Joined, as ever, with our resident rock star from the Pigeon Detectives, it is, of course, Ryan Wilson. Hello, mate. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you doing? I'm all right, I'm all right. The sun is shining. I'm up to my house, but it could be worse. Oh, it could be worse, mate. It could be worse. Uh, um, but uh, the sun is shining, so it is absolutely beautiful out there at the moment. There's no doubt about that. Also joining us, as ever, is our former footballer, former Leeds United uh, uh, fullback. It is Ben Parker. Hello, mate. Morning, mate. How are you doing? I'm really good. How are you? Um, yeah, just, again, the sun is shining. Um, what, lots, to be, lots to be happy about. Lots to be happy about. There's no doubt about that at all. Um, and also joining us from a different sport altogether, uh, but big Leeds United fan, Everson Rovers player, it is Thomas Mins joining us. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Hey, mate. I'm all good, thanks. See you. Yeah, not bad. Uh, good, to, good to see you. How, how are you uh, coping in lockdown? Yeah, well, I'm a bit mad. I've shaved my hair and dyed it blonde, and I'm a bit stuck between Tom Hanks from Castaway and the real Slim Shady, so it's going well. <laughs> It's looking good, I must admit. I'm, I'm tempted myself. I'm not. No, it's not, not worth it. It's not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And all the usual bits and pieces happening on the LS11 podcast this week. We've got Emily and Graham on the way. We've got the Alioski file of the course. And, of course, if you've got any questions, we're live streaming on uh, Facebook and on YouTube right now. So if you've got any questions for any of the lads, uh, then do get in contact with us and comment. Big thanks to our sponsors, of course, The Athletic, smashing it when it comes to written coverage of Leeds United. They've got a new podcast, The Phil Hay Show. Every week, Phil joins Dan Moylan to bring you X. Expert insight into the goings on at Elland Road. Plus, there's breaking news, big name interviews, including the manager himself. You can check out the Phil Hay Show on the link in the description and on your favourite podcast app. And also to the social base, huge Leeds fans offering social media management to a range of businesses. Ensure the business you own or work in maximises its social media potential. Packages starting from £99 and the Terrace offering quality football merchandise. You won't get in your club shop. Loads of quality gear for Leeds fans and they sponsor any news, Graham. We'll hear more about those later on in the show. This is LS11. Okay, so Ryan, how's it been so far for you this week? It's been another week in lockdown. What have you been up to? Has your wife cut your hair again? Yeah, she cut it. Um, when did she cut it? She cut it about four days ago, something like that. Oh, really? Good, doing a good job, aren't you? I think she has done a, quite a good job, actually. I'm I'm getting to the point where I'm sort of thinking, I'm wondering whether or not we I need to get it done. I'm wondering. I've gone for a lockdown beard though. I've not had it. I've not clipped it at all, and it's, it's, it's getting. I get little patchy bits that I'm like really disappointed about. Really, um, so I don't know what that's all about. Have you got, have you trimmed your beard, then, Parker? Yeah, a little trim, but to be honest, I'm looking at the hairdos here. Tom, I'm going with yours, mate. I don't know if I'd pull it off like you, but I, I think, um, yeah, I think I'm going down your way, mate. Take that. Excellent United player looking there. I love it. <laughs> I would like to see that. I would like to see that, Ben Parker, if you did a bit of a peroxide action. It's like just... the Romanian football team. The uh, Was it the World Cup? They all did it when they got when they beat England. I can remember we were about under 12s, under 13s, and we're all going, right, we'll all shave his head off, like do a, a team thing. They were just making Cy Walton who did it, no one else did, so that was great. <laughs> oh, oh, not bad at all, not bad at all. Um, so, Thomas, just uh, you know, tell us a little bit about um, how lockdown's been for you, because, of course, we're in, in rugby league, obviously there's no games going on. It was right at the start of the season. How, how's it been for you? Yeah, so basically for me, um, I'm coming back from a, a, an operation at the moment. Um, I had a Jones fracture uh, in my uh, left left foot. So um, it's been a bit frustrating, really, because I'll get into the end of my um, re- recovery rehab. Like, So I was um, probably should have been playing for the last four weeks, really. Um, so that were a bit frustrating. But um, obviously, there's a bigger picture now, isn't there, with, with all the, the, the pandemic and tactics. Um 
although I'm a bit gutted, it's it's the best thing to, for everyone to be doing at this moment in time, isn't it? Staying at home and and you can't be in a in a gym full of twenty sweaty blokes. Um, so I guess uh, we're, we're about to do. But um, luckily for us, the club have the club stood by us, and um, it's just like being a full time teacher now with my children. It's driving me insane. <laughs> I think every, everybody realised now in the last few weeks uh, how much teachers actually do for their money. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'll never complain a teacher ever again in my life now. So, <laughs> <laughs> listening in, thank you for everything you do. <laughs> Have you been doing the PE sessions, Tom? Have you been PE well, with kids? Joe Wicks has, hasn't he? So he's been 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 trying to do that as much as I can, but I'm getting a bit annoyed a bit now. So I've started making two Malcolms on the field now. Um, so that's why <laughs> we up the training. We've gone from Joe Wicks to some proper intense pre-season training. So they're not enjoying it. No, uh, intense pre-season training. Uh, uh, I'm talking about injuries. Uh, ben, how is the Achilles? Do you know what? I went um, went on a walk yesterday and I downloaded um, Strava app. So I thought, just to map out how far and how quick I'm doing at the moment, walking-wise. And you know what? I, f- I flew around. It was just, just under 5k, 4 point something it was. Um, yeah, it felt good. It felt good. But like, like you say, it's just in, it, it, for you, for a sports person, you've been out injured that long and you see that light end of the tunnel and for it to be taken away, that's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, most definitely, mate. especially so. This injury, I did it. Um, I did it in July um, last year, so it was supposed to be a three-month injury, and it's lasted nearly ten months now. Wow. Um, what is the injury that you did? So it's a Jones fracture. So basically, your fifth metatarsal on your foot. So this little bone at the bottom. Um, it's named after a surgeon, Doctor so, uh, Jones, I think you were called, and um, he did it um, dancing. Well, I didn't do it dancing. I just did it. <laughs> um, so basically the bone snapped at the bottom um, and I had to have a screw fixation in. So I got a screw in. I've never had an operation, so it were all new to me. Uh, so I got a screw put in there just to hold the bone together. Mm. Not a lot can get to the bone because it has to go under a vein or something like that, something along, along them terms. Um, so it takes quite a while to heal. Um, so while that were happening, um, I, I got released from a contract with KR. Um, I applied to joint fire service as well. So I thought, you know what, I've had enough of these inju- well, this injury. It's driving me nuts. And I, I attempted to join them. Not the option I um, passed all the medicals with all that stuff and all that. Um, but then I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to give rugby a, a, another shot. And then Fev came in for us. Two days before training for Featherstone, I was just doing some running up in the beautiful Roundy Park, if anybody knows where that is. Yeah. Doing some sprinting up there, and I just I just felt like a, a strange pop in my foot again. Um, went to see the um, professor up at um, the spire in Roundy, and um, the bone, the screw started to come away from the bone, so it left another gap. Yeah. So I, I, I had to go training. Um and explain to the physio, the, the medical staff, what, what had happened. They obviously get an in-depth um, detail of, of the, the break again. And he just said it happens, but it was the first time in five years he's ever seen it happen. So I was a bit, uh, a bit gutted. Um, so obviously I missed all pre-season and, and what have you then. So I had to have um, the screw taken out, a bigger screw put in, and then a bone graft from my heel. So I've got a nice couple of scars on my foot down here. But... Um, yeah, just as, as Ben was saying, you, you see that light at the end of the tunnel and then it goes away. But it's, I guess if you look at things when it's something out of your control, what can you do about it? I guess it's, you know, it's one of them. I can control my attitude and, you know, as long as I can do a bit of running in my um, hours, daily exercise, and that'll keep me going. And these children are keeping me on my toes as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> ben, now, I mean, when when uh, when you were injured, um, uh, which was, you know, uh, not that often, um, uh, how did you keep yourself sort of uh, going during injury? Because you, you're not training with the team at all. You're, you're pretty much you're on your own, aren't you? Yeah, that's when the, <clears throat> the mental strength tries to kick in. Uh, luckily, we had a fantastic medical um, department headed by Harvey Sharman um, and all the team up there. They, they were fantastic. Um, Alan Sutton, the um, 
um, Physio Legend was was there as well. So he used to come up with quizzes daily. Um, kept on repeating himself by end of the week, but um, but no, he was just he was just trying to keep yourself ticket ticking over really. Yeah, you had, you had your programs, so you just try and do as much as possible. But then, um, but yeah, after, after a while, you just like you just think, I just want to get outside now. And <sighs> and when and when and when you start doing your first run, and you think I'm actually enjoying this, and then when it comes a bit more difficult, you think, ah, I, I don't I don't miss being unfit. But um, but no, it's usually you just got to keep yourself occupied because like you'll you'll know Tom more than anyone, won't you? It's um, it, it it does get you down. It's because um, end end of the day, as a sports person, that, that's all you want to do. You want to go out and train with lads, and you'll you'll ask any any player, whether it's football, rugby, whatever. That's that's the thing you miss, just being involved with boys and um, having having that bit of banter. Yeah, definitely, mate. I hundred percent agree. Like you say, keeping yourself busy, and when you wear all the lads, like for me, I found. Um, so I've joined this team, and I've. I've had like three people who've gone from the rehab crew to then, you know, progress onto the field and then slowly start back running. And um, a couple of weeks back before, it was just me in the gym on my own. But luckily, I like a little dance and, you know, my music. So I've got my music. <laughs> like you say, after so long, you're just like, all right, I'm like, so much of this. I can take a watching myself dance in this mirror. Um, I want to get back on that field. But what, what, what we have been doing, um, a couple of my mates from where, where I'm from grew up. We've set up um, a Nike running club, so I'm I'm allowed to start running now, only in straight line stuff. Um, so what we've done, we've just basically set ourselves a target of 180 kilometers um, in the month. We've all got to try and run, and we've got mates who have never run before in my, in the life that are running and doing 15 kilometers, and it's just giving them a lot of um, a lot of confidence and making them feel good about themselves. So um, for all this. Uh, that's going on it's um it's good to see people changing the, the lifestyles a bit as well yeah yeah exactly i think there's uh, the, the thing i've noticed as well is that there's so many people walking their dogs uh now uh where i am uh around Charleston, and um i'm just sort of wondering you know all these dogs are just not getting walked uh, like at all and then suddenly there's like loads of dogs everywhere i'm like what's going on did, did they just keep the dogs in the back garden and then and not do anything with them ryan talking of injuries obviously we all know of uh, your your very famous knee injury mm -hmm. uh, but have you had an injury that's kept you out of the band? Um, what my, in the early days, my knee injury, uh, did I, we have to cancel? Oh, this is talking when we just put, used to play in pubs around Leeds. But um, no, I, I, even with my knee injury, I had a brace on, on my knee. Yeah. And back then, I don't know for some reason it makes it sound old, but it was quite cool to wear pretty baggy jeans and I managed to get the brace on underneath my jeans so it oh. didn't didn't look like weird um granted I was just rooted to the spot on the stage you know I couldn't really move about but still managed to play the gig um but one of the worst things uh, one of the worst gigs I've ever played from, from were from illness and um I had um flu um genuinely I'd like the flu virus and we were supporting yeah. the band James you know the big band James yeah, exactly. And um, we were playing at Manchester Arena, 20,000 people. And I were on death's door and I literally got dragged to the gig. And fortunately, it was a support slot. So we we played for like half an hour and it was the hardest half an hour of my life. Like when you've got like a flu virus, it just takes everything out of you. You have absolute no energy. And literally having to stand and play for half an hour with no energy, that was the hardest gig I've ever, ever played. But um Got through it. Didn't let the boys down. And, uh, oh, managed to... The show must go on. Show must go on. Yeah, literally. Uh, to be fair, they were proper. The lots after me did, lads. But um, yeah, I literally got pushed on stage and dragged off, and um, then just collapsed in dressing room. Just get, take me on, please, take me on. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, uh, I've mean... never cancelled because of injury or illness. Matt, we, we have the thing. Here. I mean, uh, talking of injuries, he, oh, he yeah. had like. God knows how many injuries, hasn't he? He's uh, more than a footballer, more than Ben Parker. More than Ben Parker, yeah. He's, um, he's like the Darren Anderton of the music world. Uh, <laughs> Darren Anderton used to always get injuries, Spurs and England player. Um, yeah, I think the the worst one war we played that one big weekend, you know, that big Radio 1 festival they do, <clears throat> excuse me, they do it all over the country. 
and um on the second to last song if you've not seen the pigeon detectives but i think matt's really active and second to last song he jumped off the drum kit doing a big like scissor kick thing and he, he tore his hamstring and um we, we were we were unaware we were unaware of this and then we played the last song and he walked off stage and he probably won't, he won't mind me saying this but he walked off stage got straight back backstage and he just threw up he just threw up backstage as soon as we got off stage so he's a, he's a proper showman, really. The show must go on. He, he finished the gig, but then he got off stage and he, and he was like, I've never seen him like it. And he was just like laid on the floor in the fetal position going to somewhat serious. So wrong guys. And um, we had to get like the medics out from the festival, got taken to hospital. And we were supposed to be yeah. doing, we were starting a tour. And the first week we're in Ireland, um, tour in Ireland first, first week, and then over to um, United Kingdom and uh, we had to cancel the, the Irish bit of the tour so he had to rest up and then we had a physio on tour with us for three weeks <laughs> like, well, they were just getting like, massaged and stretched and stuff like that um, and that's that's just one of his injuries he fractured his heel jump, jumping off a big speaker system when we played in Manchester um, he's done all sorts of stuff he's crackers <laughs> he's crackers I feel quite left out, really. The only time I've ever been injured that it's stopped me doing my job was when I lost my voice. That 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 is literally <laughs> is it. That's the that's the only thing I can compare. And even then, I got sent home because I actually did the breakfast show uh, on the radio station I was working at, and uh, my voice was so bad that I was talking like this. Uh, and the the station director actually phoned up half about half an hour in and said get out get off now you are not working but then you're a freelancer so you know i was all, i would turn up even if it, like, i was half dead uh because <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, you don't work you don't get paid yeah uh, it was always a, it was always the issue really it was always the issue We've got loads of comments coming in on uh, facebook and on youtube so uh make sure you keep those coming in if you've got a question for any of the lads uh including course thomas mins is with us uh this morning uh from uh, feverston rovers uh even if it's a rugby league question we could chuck that in as well so it's on youtube and uh, facebook uh but time to hear from one of our sponsors of course the athletic uh, a must for all football fans especially leeds united the athletic bringing you the best coverage of your club a world-class team of football writers including of course phil hay uh completely ad free no ads no pop-ups and the new home of phil hay as we said um i don't know if you saw it this week but there's a really really interesting article that he's done uh, this week, um, uh, which is uh, all with uh, Luciano Becchio. Uh, mm. Oh, I've just had some posts come through. Thank you, Posty. Um, <laughs> and uh, the uh, it's really, really interesting because um, it's the interview has taken four weeks to do. Four weeks um, uh, because uh, he didn't want to do it over the phone. He didn't want to do it like on Skype or anything. He wanted to do it by email. I know that's random. That I mean, Ben, ben you know, you obviously know Luciano. He, 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 why would he do it on email? Do you think it's the a language thing? Did it? It didn't. Don't speak good much English, does he? Is that right? He knows more than he lets on. Put it that way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but do you reckon it's just easier for him over email? Because it seems weird. Oh. Four weeks over emails to do an interview that could take half an hour or an hour on Skype or whatever. No. Oh. Oh, he got, got got there in the end though, didn't he? Is he shy? Is he a shy fella? You know, would he not want to go face to face with a journo? Do you reckon? No, no. He's a, um, I, I think um, I can remember when he was playing. He um, he didn't really do interviews. They want he want confidence speaking the right. like English. But if you got he got him on his own or twos and threes in the change room, he can he could hold a conversation. Mm. Probably not my Ponty accent going pretty quick, but if you slow slowed it down, <laughs> um, it might it might have been not been, been all right. But uh, no, he, he, he knows more than he's letting on. Does Luke Chan? Don't let him fool you. No, Do you right. that's the same with Bielsa as well, though. That he knows more than he's letting on. I th see. I think uh, I, after two years here, he's a very intelligent chap. I think he's fluent, fluent in in English. I think so. Um, we, I, we cover press conferences, and he sometimes corrects um, the whoever's translating from it's. Um, I forgot his name now. Um, is a, is a, is one of his coaches who normally does it, and he, even he doesn't speak superb English. Um, and Bielsa corrects him sometimes. You know, obviously, if the translation's not quite right or it doesn't, you know, mean what he's trying to say. Um, so I think he does know a little bit more. He's letting on. 
Um, but you do want to catch up with the uh, Phil Hay article. It is uh, really, really interesting. Uh, he's uh, interviewed about his journey. He's spoken English. He says here is limited, as is Phil Hay Spanish. Um, so over the course of four weeks, they go back and forth via email discussing Leeds, Goals, Neil Warnock and Dimitar Berbatov. Um, so it's well worth having a little look at um, if you want to. Uh, so you can get Phil's Leeds United coverage as part of your subscription to The Athletic, where fans of the podcast can now get 50% off the annual subscription price and a seven-day free trial. To get the deal, head to theathletic.co.uk slash ls11, theathletic.co.uk slash slash LS11 uh, for your seven-day free trial and then 50% off, of course, of uh, your annual subscription as well, which is not bad at all. Okay, let's have a look at some of the comments that we've got coming in uh, this morning, guys. Uh, Loads of people watching uh, live uh, this morning. Adam and Eve saying, what time do we start? Well, we've started, mate. Um, Martin Aykroyd uh, says, uh, morning, lads. Uh, Hope you're very well there, Martin. Uh, Ian Ewing uh, says, morning. I'm so glad I'm a postie, he says. At least it stops me going stir crazy. Um, well, he's probably working quite a lot, I would imagine, at the moment. They're still they're still going, aren't they, posties? Thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, Kev Wilson, morning, lads. Good to see you all. Uh, and uh, elsewhere, we've got um, Bobby Robert Atkins saying, hey, boys, good evening from Melbourne. Good day, mate. There you go. Uh, Johnny Brown. Everybody knows a Johnny Brown. Morning, gentlemen. Hope you're safe and well. No ironing duty for, for me today. So I can just sit back with a cuppa and an egg sarnie and watch in peace while Ronnie and Reggie are still asleep and the boss is working. Ronnie and Reggie. Ronnie and Reggie. Is that your kids or is it a cat and dog or a cat and dog? dog? Yeah. Like, no, Johnny. That's class names for whatever you, if it's kids or, or um, I mean, if, it, if they're going to grow up to be cool kids at school i think so ronnie and reggie yeah you do, you, you're not going to mess with them if you're not they come with them. They're, they're twins and it's ronnie and reggie you're not gonna ronnie, mess and, ronnie and reggie brown <laughs> <laughs> um the reister uh has got in contact here we go so what are you guys opinions on leeds potentially buying john kevin austin big kev uh ben what, what do we think what do we think well from a footballing point of view we haven't really seen much no. of him due to um, due to him trying to go up to the fitness levels, and then unfortunately picked up a injury. But you're going off his uh, of his um, record, his reputation. He's um, a player who's come to us. Uh, many people say he's too good for the championship, and would would be an addition to the Premier League. So you just got to take it off that because no one can really give a judgment because no one's really seen him, seen him play in a in a lead shirt much. So you've. Um, and that's where you got to trust the uh, the recruitment people at the club, the, the obviously the manager, the coaches, because they they don't bring people in who are who aren't worthy enough to to play for us. So um, and all we and all we said in January, if you're going to bring people in, you've got to have a look and an eye on getting promoted as well. There's no point in bringing people in to then get promoted in four months' time and then you need to ship players on because what, what what's the point of that? It's more of a long-term kind of thing when you're spending that much amount of money on someone. So, look, if they brought him in, they, they fully expect him to make um, the step up to the Premier League so, and that's what you got to judge him back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thomas, what, what have you thought about the recruitment uh, and uh, specifically someone like Big Kev? It was very exciting um, uh, when he decided to come on. Um, but uh, what have you thought of him? I think you've got your mic muted at the moment there. Uh, oh, there yeah, so, yeah, the t- said there, you know, you, you, you have the trust in the, the board and the people who are bringing the players. Um, but like I said, I haven't seen much of him um, other than obviously these, these highlights before he was um, signed for Leeds. Um, but for me, he's my top top goal scorer on my FIFA, um, FIFA <laughs> player. <laughs> Been signed on a five year deal. I'm up to extend his contract anyway after this phone call. He's, 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 doing, he's doing me very well on FIFA. So. <laughs> See, I'm not a big FIFA. We were looking for people to play FIFA for the podcast, weren't we? Uh, because I, I don't really, uh, really play it. Uh, ben doesn't. Ryan doesn't. Maybe Thomas should be our FIFA representative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go. We're potentially arranging a bit of a tournament with our sponsors of Social Maze, um, but I, I don't have FIFA, and none of us have FIFA. <laughs> so, um, 
even though I stopped playing FIFA a few years ago because I thought it got a bit crap, but I've heard the new one's pretty good, so maybe I'll have to get involved. But they do want to play on a PlayStation 4. Um, I don't have a PlayStation. I'm an Xbox person. Yeah, so, I'm a PlayStation. I'm a PlayStation. So, Let's play FIFA. Um, currently uh, playing Animal Crossing on the Switch, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, but my seven-year-old absolutely loves it. Um, Reister has also got a question for Thomas as well. It says, Thomas, as you play for Featherstone Rovers, do you know my granddad? He used to play. He's called Gary Waterworth. Putting you on the spot now. Um, no, I don't know the name Gary Waterworth. Um However, I've only been at Featherstone for, what, three, three months now. I was last there on loan from Leeds Rhinos when I was 19, so around five years ago now. So I don't really tend to know the history of, of the club of Featherstone as such. Um, but it, it, you know, I might, I might know him if I um, look into the, the history. Uh, there you go. Uh, now you've, you've been there three months. That means basically you should know everybody uh, that, uh, that, that ever played for Featherstone or ever surrounded Featherstone at all. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I, ideas of, I just know every um, every gym equipment that we've got so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to get used to that, there's no doubt. Uh, keep your comments coming in, of course, uh, right the way through on either YouTube or on Facebook uh, this morning. If you've got any questions, uh, for Ryan, for Ben, or for Tom as well. Um, and um, oh, just before we go on to um, any news, Graham, has anybody watched anything new, new on like Netflix or of, of things you're getting through? Uh, obviously, everybody's watched Tiger King so far, you know. Uh, oh my God, Thomas, 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 you, you've not watched Tiger King. All I can, because my, my, my son, he loves TikTok at the moment. Um, and all I hear is this Carol Baskin song that goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so walking around the house singing that and <clears throat> me and my partner we, we, we've got Sky Go on the um, the Xbox and Netflix one of them smart TVs where you can press you know to get there mm, yeah. obviously we're having children they love hiding things um, <laughs> and the real remotes up there with the top two things I like to hide oh, so God. so it's gone missing so we can't access Netflix through there but we've got Sky Go on the Xbox to the telly so it's absolutely killing us at the moment because we're just we're hearing it so much, especially in this lockdown. We just see it everywhere, and we just can't get hold of it. So I look for the last time. Yeah, you're going to have to watch it because it is absolutely brilliant. Ben, have you been watching anything else this week? What have you been getting into? Ozark, getting very good on Ozark. Um, nearing, yeah, nearing series end of series two. So it's, <gasps> oh, it's um, so good. Series, I'm just starting into series three, and it's getting really, really good. Yeah. So. Um, that, yeah. That's 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 the highly recommended one. Did it, has, has, has anyone seen the, the English game on Netflix? Yes. No, not yet. It's excellent. I loved it. I, I binged it all in about two days. Yeah, I, I think for anyone, obviously, if you're listening to this, obviously you must love football. Yeah. Um, so so g g give it a watch because based on a true story, um, late um, 1800s, wasn't it? About yeah. how kind of the FA Cup came about, but. Um, there's a few little storylines in between, but predominantly around football and how it kind of started. And yeah, it's it's it's, it's fascinating, really. It's like Downton with football, uh, <laughs> yeah. because it's actually it's actually written by the same guy that wrote Downton, William Fellows. Um, so it's, it's got that DNA in it, and uh, you can t you can definitely tell. But it's really good, isn't it? It's yeah. really really good. Um, Didn't Downton or um, someone like that do a or Sunderland do a Netflix? documentary Were yeah it? yeah i've not watched it yet i'm sort of keeping that at the moment to uh to, to watch it and I've, I've still not been able to get into it just yet i'm um, just not having time of an evening i'm watching a quiz which has been on itv the last couple of nights which is all about the who wants to be a millionaire and the yeah. copying major um and that's really good what have you been watching uh uh ryan um i've been i'll tell you what i've been watching um i don't know if any of you have got that, that apple TV or whatever it's called, yeah. you know, like yeah. Apple version of Netflix. Um, of course I've got it. Of course it's Apple. Of course I've got it. You know it. what's shit though? Apple, sort your, sort your act out. I can't stream it to a, te a telly. Why well, uh, not? I don't know. Why, why? I can stream Netflix and everything else to yeah. telly. Stuff, but, and, and I've got a pretty new telly. I've only got it last year. I've got a big TV. I've got a uh, Apple TV. 
So I don't have Apple TV. The thing is, you got the it's because <laughs> Apple want Apple want you to buy their little box. And, and look, I like I like Apple. Get I'm, a I'm, I'm on an Apple Mac thing now. Well, yeah. Why do I have to buy Fire Stick though, Darren? Come you on. Can, if you've got an Apple Mac, if you've got a, a MacBook, you can then um, throw that screen to the. Um, you can air You can air stream it to your TV. You can share uh, the screen. I, I can't. It don't work. Like really? you've got to have, you've got to have one of them little Apple. You've got to have one of them little Apple things plugged into your telly. No, you don't. You don't. Honestly, you don't. You cannot. Um, uh, you can get a Fire Stick, and that's what we use Apple TV on. Is on the Fire Stick, but you can share your screen. Whatever's playing on your Mac, you can share your screen with your TV. Well, I'll TV try it again, but I couldn't get it going, and it didn't make it. But anyway, um, on Apple TV or whatever it's called, I'm watching a thing called C. Um, yeah, it's um, with it's that lower. What's his name? Jason Momoa. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, that big fellow in Game of Thrones, and uh, he played the the that sea god guy. Aquaman. Um, Aquaman. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm not a movie buff, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> that sea god guy. That's that's the one, god guy. That's um, the god guy. Not not Poseidon or Neptune. The, the, uh, the uh, other one. one. The other one. Um, anyway, that, I've been watching that, and I think we've got the um. I'm on the last episode. I think there's eight, yeah. and me and my missus have binged watched that a little bit recently. Um, been watching this. Well, finished the Sundown documentary. I finished that last week. Um, yeah. which you were on about Tom. It's good, but the thing is with Sundown one, watch the first one first. Um, which were the season, their first season in the championship. Yeah, this one's uh, about the first season in the league, league one. So for me, that's I just find it really interesting. I mean. Ben, have you watched the Sunderland documentaries? Yeah, yeah, seen them all. Good watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completed it, mate. Um, <laughs> completed it, mate. <laughs> so um, for me, it's um, it's a really good insight to behind the scenes in, in football. Do, do you see stuff like that being a player, Ben? You know, do you ever see how owners and things are, or they or they're totally different to you than what they're like when they're in their own offices? Do you know what I mean? Do you ever? Is there any correlation? Do you see much of it like that? No, no, you don't. It's all it's all behind kind of closed doors unless you've got a documentary crew inside with you. <laughs> but uh, but no, you don't, like, as, as a player, you just get on with your day to day activity. That's like, that's your job. But um, Thomas, what what would happen um, if there were a documentary around rugby day to day? Would that be a good watch? Oh, 100 percent, mate. It, it wouldn't make it. The one like left on earth. <laughs> The best thing about you know you as a sports person is, is your teammates, like the laugh you have with them and stuff like that. It's, it's second to none, isn't it? So I think there's a couple of stories that would definitely not get aired. But other than that, <laughs> I would pay good money to see that. I think I would pay good money to see a rugby league one uh, being done. I think be a lot of people would be up for that. <laughs> I what, what, what they should do is uh, when they do the Mad Monday, just get a camera documentary crew following them around on that particular day. <laughs> that, that, that'd be good viewing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be 18 certificate, I think, uh, that one, definitely. But if you've got your Apple TV and you've got it working then, after you've finished um, uh, you watching C, then you need to watch The Morning Show, which is amazing, and then also you need to watch Servant. And Servant is done, oh, my God, that will blow your mind. It is amazing, right. Ryan. Love it, yeah. Right. Cool. It's weird as hell. It's weird as hell, but it is absolute batshit great. It's uh, it's really really good. You'll enjoy that. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, you can... The Harry Potter's at the moment. <laughs> My little boys started watching them again, and um, I tell you a little funny story. When I'm about eighteen, at Leeds Rhinos, never Longbottom. Matt Lewis is a massive Leeds Rhinos fan, um, and I got auctioned off for a rugby sevens tournament at Headingley. And it had like all the sponsors in and a couple of celebrities. And um, he auctioned and he bought, he, he bought me from an auction to play for his sevens team. Um, yeah. So I was, I was, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, I just turned 18, like, played, made my debut for Leeds, and then Neville Longbottom just bidded for me. So, in a couple of years, I could, because my son's into the Harry Potters now, he's, I bought him a wand the other day. Just, Try and keep him busy, and um, he's been casting spells. And he's—I um, told him the story about the um, the Neville Longbottom. Um, 
He can't believe it. Every time I watch it now, it's like, that's your mate there. I can't believe your mate killed the snake in, in Harry Potter. And <laughs> it's never happened now. But um, yeah, we, we, we've managed to win the tournament as well. So um, speak to him, speak to Neville. Well, my, and now and again, he's, he's from around where, where I'm from as well. So pretty, pretty cool, that, I guess. That's yeah. very cool. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Uh, yeah, I must admit, we've uh, we've uh, certainly gone through quite a few of the, uh, the Harry Potters recently as well. There's no doubt about that. This is being constantly on Sky Movies at the moment. Um, get your comments in. What are you watching? What are you doing uh, to get uh, through lockdown uh, on Facebook and on YouTube? But it's uh, time now to delve into some news. <laughs> Yes, it's time for the news section. Any news, Graham, on the LS11 podcast. Brought to you, of course, by the lovely Terrace, of course. Uh, wonderful guys uh, providing unique football merchandise that connect uh, fans to their favourite footballing moments. Inspired by retro kit culture, iconic leg- legends, you can get your hands on anything from phone cases, beach towels, to their ever-famous kit mugs. It's the Terrace, more than just an order number. And, and on some- the Terrace, awesome, not they? Darren, on the, on the terrace, sorry. Um, the, we've had a comment. Chris Artis Shaw has asked, um, where did you get that pillow from? And I assume he's uh, on a black yes. pillow, which is from the terrace, who sponsors. us. There you go. Was it really? That's, yeah, that's from the terrace. So is that big blanket thing, um, evening post blanket. So is my mug. Not LF, that LF terrace mug. mark as well. Uh, yeah. This is not from the terrace. This is from Smiggle. Uh, <laughs> That's a, a beer mat thing. That's a Billy Banks edition. Oh, yeah. look at you. I'm, like, I'm like a terrace warehouse in here. You are, aren't you, really? Good yeah. Lord. You've got everything there, haven't you? Um, keep your comments coming in, and uh, we'll run through uh, more of those. But uh, let's start the news with, oh, this is interesting, isn't it? Um, whether or not we can actually finish this season. Um, uh, the EFL meeting, Ryan, had some, uh, some interesting news come out last week, didn't it? They did, yeah. Um, I think it was Wednesday afternoon. It, it was just, just after we recorded. Um, they announced that they'd had a meeting and they want to wrap the season up in 56 days. Now, further information has come out about that. They're, they're kind of saying that they want the football to potentially start on the 6th of June. And the they won't allow any teams to go back to training until at least the 16th of May. So they're going to give them a chance at very least to prepare a little bit you know um I'm, I'm sure they're all working hard at home doing the best to keep fit but i, I assume obviously you two and a, a rugby player an ex-footballer you'll know that to do your training you've got to be doing it with, with your, your special tactics you've got to be doing it with the lads with your managers and the coaches and things like that so um yeah potentially we might have some football but one of the stipulations was it'll be it'll be behind closed doors um i think look in this pandemic anything subject to change if for whatever reason it gets better, then maybe you know they might allow fans. But I don't think it's going to get better any any time before the sixth of June. You know, um, to a point where they're going to allow thirty, forty thousand people to congregate in one area. So yeah. the, the problem is it, it'll be behind closed doors by the looks of it. But to be honest with you, I'm at the point now where. I'd, I'd take behind closed doors games. You know, as long as the, the broadcast, we can watch them. It'll keep us all entertained at home we can still chat about it the sponsors who sponsor people they can still get the sponsors seen and everything it'll kind of just get the industry up and running a bit unfortunately uh, us as fans just won't get to see it in a live atmosphere but um obviously it's unique circumstances and i think majority of people just want the football season to to get up and running again Ben, do you think it's uh, a, a doable what they're saying, getting it all done in uh, fifty six get fifty six days? I think yeah, from from a football's perspective, because you can play two games, three games a week, it's it, it's not a problem. But if we're touching uh, obviously with, with Tom joiners with rugby, uh, one of my best mates plays for Wakefield, Joe Westerman, and um, been speaking to um, Westy about this, especially from a rugby point of view. If you just also start training and then the games start a week later, two weeks later after you've just started back training. You're going to pick injuries up and it's just not little niggles because 
I don't know a sportsman who hasn't played a game without a niggle. Everyone goes into a game okay. feeling or something here and there. But it's more your major injuries. Um, uh, football would be the same. With, um, you'd, you'd pick up injuries if you go straight back into the, the, the matches. But more rugby as well, Tom. You, you need you just can't have a week or two, surely, for, for contact and then expect to play <laughs> an 80-minute game of rugby and, or, a, or a game of football from a football's point of view. No, yeah, definitely, mate. I agree. Um, I think um, Gary, everything for all the rugby fans who are listening, um, he, he owns um, Leeds Rhinos. He came out and made a statement um, that we, rugby put well, rugby players might have to play three times a week. Um, and I think that's that's crazy. Um, just mm. so you know, so over Easter period, you have to play two, to, two twice in five days or seven days over the Easter period. And that's a massive toll as it is anyway. And you only have to do that just for one part of the month of the year. To do it every single week, um, I just don't understand how it'd work. You know, after I don't know how you feel after a football game, but after a rugby game, it's like being hit by a bus, literally, mate. Honestly, you just peel yourself off your bed the next day and have a, have a bit of stretching, a bit of pull recovery, and then you know, it'll sort of ease off. But like you say, with them niggles, they'll, people will be going into games with worse than niggles it'll be you know bigger injuries and stuff like that and a lot of people in rugby a lot of players that um, tend to get a lot of their extra income is from appearances win bonuses and people just will sacrifice their player welfare for obviously the extra cash won't they so if they're going in with a niggle and they know it could potentially become something worse but they get £500 set for that appearance they're going to do it aren't they and it's just I think it'll just get out of hand a bit Mm. Now, that, 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 that's actually a very good point, that, mate, because you're, you're right, people, let's say, have all these clauses within the contracts, win bonuses, appearance fees, all that kind of stuff. So, and um, they'll just want to get out there to get to get that, like I say, some, some players do, to get that extra bit of money. And um, there's got to be a, a, f- um, a point of view for player welfare in all of this. Yeah, of course, of course, we want the season to come to an end, but you can't sacrifice the play, like say, the players' welfare, just to complete a season in what fifty six days. It's it's it's, it's doable, um, but ev- everything around it's got to be um, safeguarding the players as well, and also also the, the the general public, like you mentioned there, around behind closed doors. Yeah, I, I can see that to start with. Um, whether come, come to last two, three games, whether we're in a position to allow fans in or not, no one kind of knows that. But everything's just again when when this first happened, we on this uh, on this podcast we said common sense. So that that's got that's a big element about about it all. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, fifty six days is about eight weeks, um, and there's nine games in the championship to play. But that is fifty six days. Is in, includes the playoffs and the playoff final as well. So obviously the teams that get to the playoff finals are going to have three extra games out there to play. So that would be twelve games in in eight weeks. So it's doable. But like you said, there's, there's you're definitely going to get niggles and injuries along the way uh, a lot more than obviously in regular terms. And I mean, I played rugby since I was about fifteen at school, and. Um, you know, when I when I used to play school rugby, like you just get battered from pillar to post, you know, and coming off with short sore shoulders and bruises and stuff. It's a lot more physical than football. So I can imagine there's no way I mean, from my little knowledge of rugby, there's no way you guys can play three games in a week. No way. You just it'd be just insane. Absolutely insane. You'd be, you'd be all knackered. And, it, and it's one thing saying that about sort of like Super League teams that are full time, but you've got to then bring into the like championship teams like Featherstone. They're part time. So some uh, most of these players have got, you know, uh, jobs, full time jobs um, and then play for Featherstone Rovers on top of that. So how the hell would they be able to do th- two or three games? It just it just wouldn't work, Thomas, would it? No, exactly, mate. Like you say, a, a lot of people, you know, the the roofers, you know, um, they, they have a they have a second second income as well as this because it's part time. And you know, to, to say that to to see how hard these people are working, I obviously train with them um, and see like some some of the lads like when we played them in the pre season game, we played Leeds Rhinos on a Friday, and some of the lads were finishing work at like five to then go and play at eight o'clock and then to get up next on Saturday to then go work, you know. 
and to throw three games in there. I don't think it's fair for for the championship teams that are full time. Fair enough for the the teams in the Super League that are full time because that's that's um, that's all income and a lot of the money in the Super League you can live off. Um, but championship as a part time, it's it's not really. Um, There'll probably be the odd, odd couple of players here and there who, who would be comfortable enough to to live off of that. So I just like to say, it's got to be player welfare. They've got to take into consideration. But for the championship, I'm not too sure how they would do it. Um, I know a couple of um, people have suggested throwing in um, younger players, but it's, there's only so long you could probably play a young player before they start thinking. You know, realizing what money is, and you know how much I should be getting paid, and you know, speaking around, and you, you can't just use a young player for five games and then just throw him, throw him away just because one of your players has been injured. If you know what I mean, I don't think that'd be, yeah. be fair as well. So it's sort of finding a balance around it all, I guess. But like Ben says, as players, we just keep our heads down and go on with things. Yeah, just get on with it. Let's just get on with it. Uh, well, it's going to run and run this until well, we know what's happening and uh, we're coming out of lockdown, I'm sure. But uh, they're hoping um, around May 16th, starting football about 6th of June. But well, I think we'll hear something on lockdown probably this week that will be extended. So that might have to be tweaked slightly. Um, elsewhere, well, there was some news um, uh, about Norman Hunter, wasn't there, Ryan? Yeah, and um, Paul Hudson on uh, Facebook is just uh, is actually commenting in as well, just asking if there's any uh, latest on Norman Hunter. Um, unfortunately, there's no latest on him, and um, for people who don't know, Norman Hunter is diagnosed with having COVID-19 and was taken to hospital, um, when I think it was Friday maybe, just before the weekend. Um, so obviously all our... All our prayers are with Norman, and you know, is it? We know he's a tough fella. We know we'll um, we'll he'll fight as hard as he can, and um, you know, he's he's a guy that I see at Ellen Road every every time I go there. Uh, ben, you'll see him as well, and his 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 passion and commitment to Leeds United is second to none, and he's well, he's a legend, isn't he? He's a legend of the club, and we're all behind him as Leeds fans, and um, I'm sure as everybody is uh, in these situations right now, we're behind anybody, you know, we want everybody to get well and beat this virus, but, you know, Norm's a strong fella, and I'm sure he'll bite the legs off the bastard virus, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> ben, you've you've uh, worked with uh, with Norman uh, and uh, been around him up at uh, Ellen Road, and he is just a, he's a, he is a lovely, lovely guy. Uh, Norman, obviously, he was a fearsome competitor on the pitch. There's no doubt about that. But uh, one of the, the the loveliest guys I've ever worked with, certainly uh, in in this business. He's uh, he's a salt of the earth guy. Yeah, pe- people like Norman Hunter, Eddie Gray, the guys from that era. Not mm. only were they um, some of the best footballers around from their time, the unbelievable top blokes. And that, I think that I think that's what separates them from quite quite a lot of people, to be honest, because they've got the time of day for you. I could listen to uh, Norman Hunter talk for hours and hours. His knowledge about the game is unbelievable. Since Bryn Laws come come back um, for the on onto the commentary team, that's how Bryn started off. He used to be Bryn and Norman, and yeah. the stories that Bryn talks about um, the times together the the kind of one line as it, it it came out with Norman um I'm always quizzing Bryn about about what was what was it like what was his insight how was it how was he watching the game how did he get it across um and just um what what I would say is as well that the word legend it get it gets thrown around don't it in in sport and just in in normal like, oh, he's a legend they're a legend but he is actually a, a genuine legend, um, not not as a sportsman, but as just a, just an all round top top bloke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly is, certainly is. So we wish him really, really well, uh, Norman. Make sure you you, you battle this one. A um, um, couple of positive bits of news. There was a couple of birthdays, Ryan, as well. <laughs> yeah, a couple of birthdays. Birthday uh, news in this. Uh, yeah, um, our Spanish wizard Pablo Hernandez uh, celebrated his thirty fifth birthday on uh, Friday. And um, again, we throw the word legend about a lot, but I think he is a legend of um, certainly of my era. It's uh, Lucas Radaby. Um, it was his 51st birthday on Sunday. So uh, mm. happy birthday to Pablo Hernandez and Lucas Radaby. Uh, 
Nice. Uh, we talked about Big Kev, um, but he's uh, he's put some stuff out on social media showing that he's uh, he's taking this seriously. This lockdown, he's he's getting involved. He looks like he's lost weight as well. I think he should be called Lean Kev now. He looks he looks really trim, and it don't it don't it just don't look as I'm not saying he were fat because he certainly won't fat, but he just looks really trim now. He, lo- he looks like yeah. a proper athlete, um, and uh, you know obviously yeah. these workout videos he's been doing. You know, makes him makes him look mean. I like it. You know, I like it a lot. And when football comes back, you know, hopefully, you know, he's going to be a real asset to us to battle in these last nine games. Because you know, as, as we were just talking about the the congestion of fixtures that there'll be, you're going to need all your squad players. You know, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of squad rotations going on with all the clubs. I reckon, you know, because if you're yeah. playing if you're playing three games a week by by third game, you know, some players' legs are going to be knackered and, and quite rightly so even though all footballers are you know very fit fellas um playing three competitive games in a week is going to be really really tough so um yeah big kev looking like lean kev definitely looking like lean kev I, i'm just wondering actually because i feel as though i've lost a bit of weight since we've been on lockdown and i would have thought it was, i thought yeah. it was in the other way um um but i i we were looking at what we'd sort of been eating and, and we're not having takeaways uh, at the yeah. moment and we're sort of cooking a lot more, mm-hmm. and I, I feel as though I'm like on a Slimming World diet because we're actually like cooking like all these really like really good food. Ben, uh, how how is your fitness? How's your diet regime been? You, are you still on COVID dry? COVID dry? Yeah, not 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 had a drop for what three and a half weeks now. Nice. Ch- 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 change man, Darren. I'm a change man. It's, um, <laughs> I, 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 so well, I've been eating quite healthy. Apart from uh, when the chocolate cupboard gives a little call about it's about nine o'clock at night, I can just hear it whispering to me, so that um, <laughs> that gets me dragged in there. But I've, I, I treat myself to a takeaway on a Saturday. I had a bit of a nightmare. I don't want to talk about it. Um, oh st- dear! St- st- oh, st- 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 no, Darren. It's um, no. I need to know now. Come on, tell us. Uh, you can't. You can't do, that. do you know what? I, w- I was that um, pissed off. I left a, a review. Ooh. And 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 and, 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 and never leave reviews. But I was that right. pissed off. I left them a review. What, um, what so happened? My, so my normal Chinese takeaway. It's been open. It were open for the first two weeks of of the lockdown. But yeah. then um, it shut down. I think last Wednesday or Thursday. Right. So and literally, it's a thirty second um, <laughs> a walk away from mine. So it's um, right. get, get, you can get it really quickly. Yeah. Um, Really nice, really popular around around here as well. But anyway, that shut down. So on Google, searching around, and there's one about about less than a mile away from me. So anyway, ring up, and she went, oh, it's an hour and 15 for, for collection or two and a half hours for delivery. And I went, I went oh, well, what's the... Um, is it is it safe to come and collect all that kind of stuff? She went, um, yeah, just come to the front of the door, and we'll hand it to you, blah, blah, blah. I was like, right, I'll do that. So turned up. She went, oh, it's going to be another 10 minutes. I went, okay, I'll wait in my car. She went, okay, I'll bring it out to you when you're ready. Another 35 minutes passed, no sign. Oh, so so no. pops, pops my head in. Um, oh, she went, can I help you? I went, well, I've been sat in my car 35 minutes. I'd, I'd like some new food now. Um, she like, she went, just bear with me. Went to the kitchen, came back. She went, no, oh, it's going to be another 10 minutes. I went, just give me my money back. I've, I've had enough. <laughs> In, 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 in between that, there were a few exchange words between me and this um, woman on the front. Oh, um, so, so Did yeah, you know, so um, I, I, I had a bit of an head loss. So, mate, I, I, so I had a bit of an head loss. Um, got my money back and um, came home sulking. This is what it's the pub quiz for on a Saturday night, was sitting in a car waiting for a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, four man. I must admit, we we ordered a pizza a little while ago, a couple of weeks ago, and it was like it took nearly two hours to get here, and it was stone cold. And we were just like, uh, "I'm not doing this anymore." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just well, not bothering, not bothering. We normally get a takeaway probably once a week on a on a Friday or Saturday, and we we haven't had any in the last three weeks. Also, um, my my, my wife's a bit bit well, like myself, we're a bit paranoid about about all this stuff, you know stuff, and you, you sometimes don't you don't know who's been handling the the food, the containers, the yeah, whatever. Um, and you can't exactly detol a pizza or a lamboona, <laughs> can you? So, <laughs> so, um, 
I can't, you know. That's what I've been doing. I thought it tasted a bit funny. <laughs> that way you left a shit review. <laughs> yeah. so what, what have you been doing? Have you, have you uh, been, able, been able to get a takeaway at all? Have you had to wait around for it? Yeah, no, I was saying, you're saying lean, lean Kev, I've turned into a chicken Kev, mate, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like you're saying, with the Dettol and um, the, the Comas, um, I sold my push bike the other week to one of my friends, and it was the strangest exchange that's ever happened in my life. It was so strange. He pulled up into the bottom of my street, so he's parked like on a zigzag, just abandoned his car in the middle of the road, basically. I've come out with a push iron, roll the push iron to him. He, he walks he walks to the push iron, takes the push iron, puts the money down, walks back to his car. I walk, pick the money up, and then he, he's struggling to get in the back of his little car. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, shall I help him here or shall I just get in the house and just lock down? And that's me done. <laughs> so I'm looking at here and I think, you know what, I'm going to have to help him here. So I said, send bike back, I'll take wheel off. It's them, you know, them easy release locks. So he rolls bike to the floor. He walks away. I walk to it, pick it up, roll in one at tyres, and then lift bike upside down. He comes and gets it, puts it in car. And I just got in the house and I was thinking, has that just really happened? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't believe it. But it's like, it's got to... Like the money was like a little plastic wallet and everything, and it was just. Oh, but, dear me. Uh, bet, it's so what, difficult. <laughs> I'm thinking, what is going on here? Just mm. give him money. But like you say, you just got to take every every precaution on you early. Yeah, 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 definitely. There's no doubt about that. Um, I hope everybody's been able to get that off. I've actually, there's a fish and chip shop in Aquaf, um, and uh, it's like one of my favourites. And um, uh, it's near my daughter's school, and they're actually doing click and collect now. Uh, so on Saturday, we've I've, I've got a, four minutes past four. I've got to go and collect. It's very specific. Four minutes <laughs> past four, I've got to go and collect uh, fish and chips twice, and a kid's fish and chips and two mushy peas. Uh, so uh, oh, don't anybody go there now. Oh, just say. and burdock, Darren. <laughs> oh, I love a dandelion and burdock with fish and chips. I haven't yeah. paid for it yet, so uh, you'd have to pay for it if you didn't get it. But you've got the spot there if you need it. Yeah. Um, okay, let's um, <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's move on um, to uh, Easter. Well, and then Ryan, Leeds United donating tons of Easter treats over the weekend as well. Yeah, they did. Leeds United uh, donated hundreds of Easter eggs to a lot of local care homes, and one of them, um, just opposite where I grew up as well, in, in Rothwell, uh, was one of them. Um, oh, right. Homely House, it's called. Um, which the community always raises money for and does little fairs and things like that. And, um, yeah, Leeds United didn't forget them and um, dropped off hundreds of eggs all across the city for um, for the care homes, which is just a, a really nice little gesture, you know. And, and again, a big thanks to, obviously, not only the club for doing that, but for the, the people that were going out and delivering them as well. You know, a lot of people volunteering to do all this work. It's incredible stuff. We've got some great... So, I mean, the, uh, this pandemic, you, you've seen some brilliance in people and and it's kind of showing a lot of people's true colors and and the majority of it i've just seen some amazing people about which is brilliant a lot of people who are a bit self-obsessed with themselves who just love dancing around on social media which i've, I've found quite cringy and, at times but, but, uh, <laughs> but whatever keeps you how many people have got tiktok oh christ yeah I, uh, I was going to download TikTok and I realised I'm not a self-obsessed idiot. So I didn't bother. Hold on, lad. Sorry. I'm a TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's TikToking all over the place, I bet. Uh, it's Thomas. He's enjoying that one. There's no doubt about that. Um, oh, you got some transfer news as well, Ryan. you got some transfer news for us. Yeah, um, another rumour to throw in here. Um, it's rumoured that Leeds United are interested in FC Freiburg defender Robin. Right, I don't know how you pronounce this, but it's spelled K O C H. So it could be pronounced Cock or it could be cock. pronounced. Yeah, I'm going to go Cock. Cock. So Robin Cock, um, and he apparently West Ham are interested in him as well, and he's a very highly rated defender. Again, it looks like one of these transfers that are probably depend dependent on Premier League football, but. Um, it's good to know that yeah. we're apparently interested in players and and like I said last week when we were talking about transfers, although this pandemic's kind of 
putting a big spanner in well, in everything, rugby, football, every sports, music industry, everything. This show must still go on in the background, really. You know, you can't just seize all operations and just think, oh, we'll start yeah. looking at transfers when we start playing football again. So, um, yeah, it looks like the, the guys behind the scenes at Leeds are, are still obviously doing their jobs scouting. And you know what? It's probably good for Marcelo Bielsa. It's probably, you know, if they're sending him names, it's another 4,000 hours of tapes that he'll watch and he'll enjoy watching. So, um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it is good. Definitely. Um, uh, elsewhere, th- this was a really quite interesting article, actually, because uh, Graham Smith did an interview with Patrick Bamford mm-hmm. um, for the YEP. Um, and it, it, this was really interesting, Ryan, wasn't it? Because he sort of like talked through his whole like players of the season almost. Yeah, it, it were good. Um, obviously, this is any news, Graham. And Graham did a piece in the Yorkshire Evening Post with Patrick Bamford and basically just shortlisted his, his four, four-man shortlist players of the season so far, I guess. Um, and his four players was um, first he picked Stuart Dallas and he says, I think he's he's coming to the team this year and made left back his own position and he's also slotted into midfield well. And then second, he picked Ben White. He said he admitted he knew nothing about him before he joined Leeds United, but when he arrived, he knew he was going to be a good player, which is probably like most people like me. As yeah. as I thought, never heard of him, but as soon as he played, I thought he's ace. His third player he picked is Calvin Phillips, and he just simply said, Cal, uh, he said, you know, everybody knows about Calvin, he's Mr. Reliable. Yeah. And then his fourth player was Jack Harrison. Uh, he said, look at him last year to so this year. Um, you could see in bits and bobs last year that he had the quality, he had the potential, but this year he looked like a different player to me. So um, I think them four players, is, <laughs> I'd be surprised if any of them may be. I don't know, maybe you could throw in Ailing. It'd be a shout if he's been superb this year. But um Best hair. Yeah, Ailing's got the best hair in the in the whole league, let alone Leeds United. Um yeah. so Dallas, Ben White, uh Calvin Phillips and Jack Harrison. So um Tom, what who, who's what do you think to that? And do you think you know, would you have anybody different? What do you think to Leeds in general this season? Obviously being a Leeds fan um all your life and under Bielsa and everything, and it's been a superb season. One second, I'm back. Yeah, yeah. sorry, mate. Yeah, so, um, yeah, basically, just while well, touching up on that, um, I owe big special thanks to um, a guy called Rod Christopher. Um, so, uh, basically, I started coaching my son's football team. Pretty strange, you know, being a rugby coach, but... Uh, sorry, being a rugby player, but with with children, you know, he, he was six when he first started last year, and this has been his first year um, at Winmore Juniors. So, big shout out to Winmore Juniors. Um, and I just thought I'd take over in in the style like we, you know, I, I get them having a laugh, we do all Fortnite dances and all that stuff. And like with children, it's more just having a having a you know a laugh and getting a look for the game. Some of them never kicked a football in their life, so. Um, Rod used to coach me um, as a football uh, at football when I was a young kid. Um, he's done a lot for the community, um, and he's still in, massively involved at Leeds United now. Um, he goes around coaching all the children. So I got speaking to Rod, and he got us the the passion back for Leeds. Really, uh, been to about seven or eight games with him this season. Um, and the last one I was at was at West Brom, and I took my little boy to his first game, but he only managed the first half, so I was absolutely gutted. Um, so it, it, my little boy, it, it was just it was pissing it down, raining, they were freezing. Felt sorry for him to be fair, but it was his first game he watched, and just from I don't know from watching live the, the when I've been there with Rod at the games, um, Jack Harrison for me, I think he's been absolutely outstanding. Mate. I think I think he does a lot of things that, off the ball that you probably won't even recognise and until you're watching it live, maybe. Um, Obviously, Cal- Calvin Phillips is is solid, um, and yeah, Dallas as well. I think Dallas has, has come on those. But I, for me, I like to um, look into players where they've come from as well. And Jack Harrison, from where he's come from, I think you're you're playing in the um, the um, American League, wasn't it? Um, and just how, how much he's come on, and he's really made that position his own, I, I believe. And just watching him live, he's electrically. You know, it's, it's so fast and sometimes he gets a bit carried away and does a bit too much skill and or probably all he needed were across probably the, the time before. But I think for me, it's definitely Jack Harrison's up there for me. I think he's been outstanding, honest. Yeah, I, I agree. He's come on late for bounds this season and he's been superb. 
kind of boy's favourite player. So yeah. I've got to, uh, he, he enjoys watching him. A little boy who were at Bradford, um, at Bradford City for a while, but he, he didn't enjoy it. So um, we've got our presentation that's been cancelled through this COVID as well. So I'm gutted for the children. We've, we, we recently got all the trophies, what have you, and um, I'm pretty gutted for him. It's supposed to be um, in May, but doesn't look like it's going to happen now and it's the first ever presentation so I'm a bit gutted for him um, I absolutely love this year so uh, I'm a bit gutted for him in that respect but yeah. hopefully we'll, we'll be able to plan it once it all passes and mm. back the yeah hopefully you can get it all back on uh, again yeah that'd be that'd be fabulous it really really would um, uh, finally uh, was the Q&A with uh, Jenny Alioski Alioski <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. on United's uh, social media um uh what were your thoughts on that ryan well he's obviously he's a bit crackers isn't he i mean he were quite tame yeah. because it was just one-on-one with probably being filmed by his own camera so he probably didn't have anybody to like show off to do you know what i mean like so he, he were quite tame on his own camera um but yeah this were a little q a league united put out on their socials um you can see the full thing on league united socials so just search for it but i just picked just cherry picked out a, a couple of um questions and, and now he he answered so he was asked um what have you been doing in the lockdown and he just simply just said i've been playing the playstation and watching netflix to pass the time same uh, as else, eh? i'm gonna say so it's the same as everybody else really um uh the next question followed on that was um uh, the best teammate to quarantine with and he actually really struggled answering this he ummed and ad for what seemed for ages um and he never actually picked a player. He kind of maybe said Calvin Phillips because he likes playing the PlayStation, but he actually his words were someone who can play the PlayStation. It's hard to choose. So uh, he seems very fixated with his PlayStation, doesn't he? Um, maybe he should play uh, FIFA for LS11 then if he's got the PlayStation. Oh yeah, we should we should get that. Jani Alioski for LS11. Mm, that'd be good. That keep him busy. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah. We'll look into that. Um, which team did you follow as a kid? And he said Real Madrid. And the reason was because his idol was Roberto Carlos, um, which is quite interesting. Obviously, Roberto Carlos, left back, Alioski's left sided player. And um, he was asked, um, <laughs> I just found this quite funny, um, how much do you enjoy shaking the tunnels? You know how batshit crazy is when he starts rattling tunnels and stuff. And he says, I enjoy it because it makes the away security nervous and angry. And then he just paused and went, I like this. <laughs> so, um, there's some sort of like weird sinister side to him coming out there. But um, th- th- there's quite a few more questions. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to read them all out. But watch it because it's quite good to, to watch him actually responding to, to the questions. So, um, yeah, that's on Leeds United Social. So check it out, the one-on-one with Jani Olioski. Uh, that's it for uh, the Leeds United news section. Any news, Graham? We'll have more of that uh, next week, of course, here on LS11. Keep your comments coming in on Facebook and on YouTube. We are uh, live streaming on those this morning. This is LS11. Uh, time to hear from one of our sponsors, The Social Maze. We all work in organisations that advertise with the overall aim of winning new business. The Social Maze Limited has helped a number of organisations generate new business, providing outstanding customer service, increasing brand awareness with an effective social media strategy. And if your place of work is not active on social media, then ask the question, why? Social media, one of the most powerful marketing tools at your employer's disposal, and many of us spending a significant amount of time browsing content on our mobile device is while we're having a dump. Uh, the social maze work with all kinds of businesses and would love to help those who may not have the time, resource, knowledge, or potential to effectively use social media. Uh, take a look at the website, the socialmaze.co.uk, or you can email info at the socialmaze.co.uk to find out more information. Um, loads of comments coming in this morning. Uh, we've got uh, Steve in LA. He's on a cruise ship, uh, finally coming home tomorrow. Thank you guys for keeping me sane uh with the podcast so he's on a cruise ship finally coming home he must have been on that a while i'm thinking yeah good good luck there steve and hopefully you know i hope you get home soon and, and stay safe with your with your partner or family wherever you're with uh jacqueline hunt uh now this is jacqueline who sent us the tim tams from australia Ooh. 
Uh, very but, nice, by the way. Very yeah. nice. Nice God. care package. Biscuit. That's a biscuit, that is. Mm. Uh, it says, evening, guys. I missed the beginning. Sorry. Hope you're all well, keeping safe and busy. Fourth week of lockdown over here. Luckily, the evenings are drawing in and the days are getting shorter. Um, Johnny Brown says, has Ben Parker ever been injured? Um, once or twice, maybe, I think. Once or twice. Um, once, once, once this year. Once this year, yeah. <laughs> Harry Lucas, where do you think our club will go if the league gets scrapped and we don't get promoted? Meaning Bielsa players, finances, future league positioning. Just interested in your position, uh, opinion, but I feel we'll get promoted. Well, there's the $64 million question, isn't it, uh, from from Harry Lucas. Um, I don't know. Would do you, Ben, I mean, I've, I've been wondering this. Do you think, because of if it, it will get sort of scrapped now, do you think Bielsa would stick around for another season because it's still sort of like unfinished business? Or could they afford to keep him for another season? Or is that completely out of the realms of possibility now? It's, it's, it's all guesswork in at the moment, unfortunately. I just I can't see any other reason away, away from not finishing the season, though. I just I think we've come too far, uh, too long into the season. We're nine games left. It's it's got to be finished. Uh, if it's behind closed doors, if it just uh, do it on a points per game kind of ratio, wh- whatever it is, I think they the, the will finish it. So, um, I f- like I f- with, with, with Bielsa is um, he could he can see he generally loves the club. He loves the city. Way interacts with the fans when he gets off the coach handing the sweets out to the kids, shaking people's hands. I think he's kind of been blown away by the uh, kind of love and affection the city's kind of shown towards him. Um, so I, th- I, th- I think when, when you get that, it's, it's very rare. Um, you, you, you know, you'll know as, as a player, as a coach, being involved in the, in the game, even in rugby as well, you, Thomas, like you'll, you'll go to certain clubs and um, there'll be that connection where you haven't had with previous clubs and it's, it's certainly got that with Leeds at the moment. Yeah, um, that would be else. I know it's, it's hard comparing, but um, when I was at OK, I had a, a coach called um, Tim Sheens, and just just we interacted with all the kids and you know the fans, and you know when we lost, you could tell it properly got him got him down as much as it. But it, the best thing about Tim, from a player's point of view, is. He'd never, he'd always do his utmost best to protect his players, no matter what. You know, if we got beat 60 0, he'd take the blame. Um, you know, just to try and take that pressure off us. Obviously, we, we know what we did wrong and stuff like that in certain games, but he'd never have the, the, you know, the blame to us. He'd always take that and, and cop it. And a bit like Bielsa, you know, when, when, when results don't go our way, he never once looks to start throwing the blame out to the, to the players. And that'll give them. A lot of confidence to then put it right, I guess. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, and a final comment uh, before we get into the only ask you first from Johnny. Uh, everybody knows of Johnny Brown um, because it, he was the guy with uh, Ronnie and Reggie. It's not their real names. Uh, he's telling us uh, this morning. Uh, it's just what he calls them. It's his nickname. Both can be sods. Uh, real names are Lennon, who's 14, named after John Lennon, uh, and a 10 year uh, 10 year pass holder with me and Alfie. 10 uh, named after Alfie named after the film not a football fan though uh, sadly he's just the lunatic of the family uh, that likes his horror films uh, so <laughs> at 10 at 10 you're liking horror ten. films wow. wow I were petrified of horror films at 10 I remember when? I remember seeing Michael Jackson's thr- thriller video um, around about 10 years old and it, it's giving me nightmares for a long long time now look yeah. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I'm scared now and uh, <laughs> I've just been uh, uh, showing my wife, uh, my my wife, not my wife, my wife, uh, uh, my daughter, um, Indiana Jones, over this oh, this weekend. Yes. So we've uh, we've done Raiders, we've done Temple of Doom, and yesterday we did uh, Last Crusade. And I'm just sort of thinking, does she need to see the fourth one? Because let's face it, it's shit. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just wondering what, whether or not what's so it called, I, Crystal Skull, or some of the fourth one, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, it's not, not good. It's not good. No. Um, but I might just uh, we might just watch it anyway. Uh, one, okay. one more comment for for Tom. I don't know if you can see that, Tom. Uh, your friend Rod Christopher who got to the football match with his, uh, Hi lads, excellent show and cheers for the kind words, Tom. Oh, that's lovely. No, no, 
Well, excellent stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, right. It's time to get into the Alioski files. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Yes, it is time for the Alioski Files for our fine Macedonian friend, where we have a look and see what has caught our eye in the world of football sport over this last uh, week or so. Ryan, what are you kicking us off with? Alioski, of course, for being Alioski. Alioski for being Alioski and uh, being quite sinister on the uh, Leeds United uh, interview did, which were <laughs> funny. Um, but um, th- this one I saw um, a few days back. Uh, Bryce Samba, which is the goalkeeper for Nottingham Forest, he tweeted out uh, a tweet um, on on Twitter, obviously, um, saying, "Oh man, I miss football and I mi- and I miss shit housing even more." And there's a picture of him getting booked by a referee, and I just thought that were really funny. And he had loads of laughing faces on it. Um, so Bryce Samba for Nottingham Forest loves shit housing people. So um, <laughs> if there's anybody watching who plays against Nottingham Forest, um, be wary of him. He's a he's a bugger. Um, uh, talking of shithousing, Thomas, if we come to you, um, uh, who's the player that's the best at shithousing that you've played with? Oh, there's loads, mate. Um, there's, a, there's a guy, uh, when, when we got relegated into the championship from the Super League, we played uh, Halifax and there's a player called Scott Morell. <laughs> and it, so, uh, he, he just gets so stuck into people, you wouldn't believe it. Like If, if you've got a bald head in a scrum, you, you're going to know that this guy's going to tell you that you've got a bald head in front of everyone. And, you know, it's just, just little things like he just constantly gets at you. And, you know, when you're in a tackle, he'll get his fingers and put them in your mouth or wherever, or, you know, someplace like the shunt go. And you just, he just winds you up, even though I know Scott really well. We get along, we get along pretty well. You just, he just winds you up, you know, he just constantly winding you up. He'll be saying, you can just take away little things like that and just he probably gets in people's heads and luckily you can shake it off sometimes but if he doesn't and he's under your skin like if you knock the ball on in front of him he's probably the worst person in the world because he's just a massive shit house with stuff like that um, <laughs> another player called Jake Connor I uh, played England Academy with Jake and um, he was one of them who I used to hate playing against he was my opposite centre and uh, through Academy we came up playing against each other all the time and uh, he was, I, could, I couldn't stand him at all. And then I played for England with him, and he's a nice guy. Um, and in the Super League, if you ask anyone, they'd probably say him. He, he's just he's just awful to play against. Just wind you up so much. The biggest shit house you play with, Ben, what do you think? The biggest shit house. <sighs> Um, us footballers are quite nice compared to these rugby lads. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, to, <laughs> to be fair, Neil Kilkenny, oh, he used to he used to piss you off playing with him. Never mind against him. <laughs> Always, I, th- I think everyone tried to fight him, whether it's trading or even in a match. Yeah, um, just annoying. But um, the, the the funniest player by. Well, to be fair, there's two. Dave Prutton. So when you see him on Sky now, been all serious. That, that's not Prutts, by the way. Prut is, is a lunatic. Uh, and um, Robert Snodgrass is um, is just he's just a funny, funny guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, who's uh, who's the biggest shit house in the Pigeon Detectives? Matt Bowman, by far. Just loves loves playing tricks on you. Just loves it. So you'd be, you'd be walking down a corridor of a venue that you're not over familiar with, and then all of a sudden he'll jump out or something like that. Or you know, just just loves loves pissing about. Just absolutely loves it. I mean, to be honest, we all wind each other up. You know, it's probably not too dissimilar to being in a, a football dressing room or a rugby dressing room. Obviously, there's less of us. There's only five. But then again, we have people who, who work for us, guitar technicians, stuff like that, and they're like our family. They are our extended family. We've got one yeah. guy. One guy has been with us from pretty much the beginning, and we call him like the sixth pigeon. You know, has been with us from the start, and um, and he's he's like he's got like a really like small body, um, like like Bruce Lee. He's got zero body fat, and he's he's quite into meditating all that sort of stuff. And to be honest, we he probably could um, get us done for sort of workplace harassment because we just run around and pick him up and run off with him and stuff. He's like, guys, I need to do work, and we're just like messing about, you know. Um, so yeah, we we all can 
we all can be a bit naughty when we when we get bored. Because the thing is, we, we've been in a band. I think um, it was something like Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin like said quite a famous quote, and I can't exactly remember what it was, but it was somewhat along lines of like being in a band for what what did he say like forty years, but I've only been playing gigs for a year of that or something like that. Is it basically what he's saying is when you go and do a gig, you play a gig for that one hour that day, you know? Yeah. But the the getting to the gig the waiting around the sound checking then waiting around and then you go and play the gig you know it's, there's like 23 hours of waiting and an hour of playing a gig so um yeah, yeah. there's a lot of time to shit out each other <laughs> <laughs> um i've got one to chuck in uh for the alioski files um which is i saw this on uh, twitter which was the aston villa forward russian hepburn murphy he was doing some back garden training uh and this <laughs> And, and, and everybody's done this at some point, I'm sure. Uh, it doesn't seem to go quite to plan. He's doing some sort of like he's bouncing off against a wall and then it just goes a little bit harder and then smashes the window on the top of his house, uh, which it's, it's, it's absolutely quality. So if, you, if you've not seen that, well done. Uh, yeah. Because uh, <laughs> go and have a look at it. I'm, I'm enjoying that. Uh, ben, have you got anybody you want to chuck in this week? Um, Jamie Mackey, the um, the the player's been around. Uh, he'll be into his mid thirties now. I think he's playing at Oxford. He's um, done um, a TikTok um, video. Um, sure, sure, Tom Mins, you 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 probably have seen this dotted around. He's done like a fitness workout. On to uh, he's got all the lycra on. He's doing a dance routine with his daughter. It's um, <laughs> it's quite a good laugh actually. I've not seen this. I've only just downloaded TikTok this week because my wife wanted to download it because she wanted to do something. Like so I'm not really averse to TikTok at the moment. No, I've, I've, uh, I've, 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 I've stayed away from it, but it's, it, was, it was just dotted all over social media. And it, it, it wasn't it funny once, to be fair. Yeah, I did one to my son and he didn't find it funny. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, nice as you say there, he's, he's dancing with his daughter and all that. Um, my son said he wanted his hair cutting like Ronaldo, so I, I'd have seen a video where this guy just uh, big his head and left a little tuff there. <laughs> so I've done it to him, um, left his little tuff there, and I just said, mate, there's only one Ronaldo. <laughs> I've got a picture of Ronaldo. <laughs> Ronaldo's hair cut, but he didn't know this fat Ronaldo is yet. He's only just like going to football like the last seven months. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he's gone downstairs, his mum were, his mum were howling, um, but he wanted his hair <laughs> Way like me, like so. I just thought perfect opportunity to do a little funny video there. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Well done. I'm loving that. Um, I've got another one for you, um, which is uh, James Milner. He is oh, featured a lot, lot. Um, mm. in the Alioski files, but um, uh, on how he's getting through lockdown um, and uh, washing individual pieces of gravel on his drive um, is possibly the most James Milner thing I've ever seen in my life. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, his hand washing uh, each one with a little like nail brush thing in his like. <laughs> And then put it into a separate yeah. one. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, what I love is the way he's embracing the boring James Milner bit. That's what I yeah. love. Yeah. Um, uh, so, because some people, you know, you might, you might have got offended by that at some point. I know Big Sam was a bit offended by the Twitter uh, Big Sam uh, for quite a while, wasn't he? He tried to take the guy to court. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't happy with it. He wasn't happy with it. What but, was it? Like a parody account then? I, I can't Yeah, remember. it was a parody account called The Big Sam, and he, he really right. wasn't happy with it. It was right. very funny. And there's a parody account, wasn't there? Boring James Milner. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I remember. Very funny. Mm. Uh, but now James Milner is better than boring James Milner. So why do you need boring James Milner when you've actually got James <laughs> Milner? Uh, anything else, anybody else want to pop in? Uh, Tom, have you got any um, nominations for the Anthony Oscar Files? I've got, um, it's probably not a bit of news, but um, did you ever see the video, probably going back about three weeks now, um, of a young boy in his back garden and his mum's recording him and he's in the goat, he's in the, he's in the net mm. and he's in the ball at the wall and he's diving left and right. Yeah. How good, how good is that, by the way? But um, then, um, pardon me if I, I say this, Incorrect. I can't say his surname, um, but is it Ilimia, the French goalkeeper? Melia. Yeah. Um, he did a video reply to the young lad. And how deep is his voice? Have you oh, heard the video? 
Terminator. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I didn't expect that voice to come out of that. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. It is a very, very good one because we we talked about that a few weeks ago when that came out. We had that on the news um, because it is just it's just it's a brilliant piece of video. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah. Any others going in uh, this week? What do we think? Uh, no, I was going to mention the James Milner one um, yeah. as, a, as a late one to throw in, but obviously you've done that. Um, well, no. who wins this week then? Well, we'll leave it up to Thomas then. Who wins this week uh, for the Alley Hockey Files? Is it uh, the uh, Aston Villa forward? Is it Jamie Milner? Uh, is it Jamie Mackey? Uh, or is it uh, Jamie Alley uh, Who wins? Uh, is that the fact that the person's embracing it as much as they are, having a laugh with it and you know, taking their own on it. I've, I've got to say, James Milner washing them pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> quite right. I think you're quite right. Uh, James Milner, congratulations. You win the Alioski Files this week. <laughs> this is LS11. Well, coming to the end of the uh, podcast, uh, but uh, still some time just to uh, run through a few of the uh, comments that will be uh, coming through on Facebook and on YouTube. On YouTube, Ross saying, morning, guys. Just enjoying the sun in my back garden listening to the podcast. Uh, thoughts on signing Jack Harrison for $8 million. I think we'd be mad to send him back to City. I think we've all uh, said that we do. Love a bit of Jack Harrison uh, this season. Uh, Johnny Brown, better call Saul. If you want to watch that, that's mint. It is mint. If you like Breaking yep. Bad, then better call Saul is amazing. Mm. Uh, Nikki, uh, on Facebook, if we go up, how should we celebrate? Parade and party at City Square or huge gig at Millennium Square? We could even get Chilino back on guitar for the pigeon. Still <laughs> novelty value. That's a very good party at Ben's. <laughs> um, Lina, he played for you, didn't he? He played with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, back when Chilino in charge of the club, he's a ma- he's massively into his music, and he plays the guitar. And um, we got invited to Wellham Road, and um, the first time we met Chilino, I walked into his office, and Benito Carboni was sat in there having his interview. And um, Benito Carboni looked at us five, and we're like, "Who are these lot?" And we were like. Is that Benito Carboni? Like, like nudging each other, Benito Carboni. And um, anyway, so Chilino, Chilino shouts somebody, um, a load of beers come in to office. Chilino whips out this like 15 grand Fender Stratocaster, tells us a story behind it. Um, and then us five, Chilino, Benito Carboni, all sat there drinking Peroni and playing on his guitar. And um, yeah, it was such a surreal experience. And it would, t- to be honest with you, you know how bad he is. He don't, he don't give a shit what he's saying. And he just kind of telling us how the club's in a right mess, you know, back like, you know, I, I don't know, in admin, you know, the administration, there's loads of paperwork and all sorts of shit going on. And he was just absolutely slagging off the previous owners. And um, <laughs> like, this is just absolutely insane. Um, and then um, he came on stage with us. Uh, we got invited to play that. Leeds United end of year players do thing and he got up and we played a Jimi Hendrix song so he loves Jimi Hendrix and um, and he played uh, on a Pigeons track as well so um, yeah weird experience I mean for all his faults and we know he's a crazy guy and stuff he's always really nice to us personally um, but obviously don't really agree with how he run the club but um, yeah as a person he was all right to us yeah yeah exactly um i I wanted to uh actually i wanted to ask you something on the pigeons as well uh Mm -hmm. before we uh wrap up um was it did you see the kaiser chiefs have done like a a a different version of one of their songs for uh uh, lockdown Mm -hmm. Uh, it was released yesterday and it's very very good yeah i I think the pigeons need to do one Uh, i mean you know i there's no such thing as a new idea, obviously. Um, but I'm just thinking you need to rework one of your songs. Yeah, that'd take um, a bit of effort and the Pigeon Detectives are a bunch of lazy bastards. So um <laughs> I don't think it had um I don't think it'd happen really. None of them can be asked doing it, to be honest with you. Um so um although, although none of us suggested it. So Put some new lyrics to something, I don't know, like I found out. And then instead of saying, going out, we're going out, we could put staying in, we're staying in. See? There you go. For you already. Me and you'll do it, Darren. All right. 
Yeah. I, I, I can bounce around a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm no singer, though. I'm no singer. I'm no front man. I'm no yeah. front man. Uh, <laughs> ben on triangle, yeah. uh, as we say. Um, and Thomas, uh, Thomas, can you sing? Are you, are you a karaoke man? Are you, are you, are you, what, what's, uh, what's your favorite day? I just recently um, started playing triangle in a reggae band. All I do is back and ting. <laughs> hey, triangle. We'll be part of the two on triangle. Um, uh, listen, uh, <laughs> thanks very much for joining us on the uh, podcast. Just uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, some of the speaking that you do as well now, uh, Thomas, uh, because uh, in Min's mind, uh, you've been going into schools and delivering some seminars recently. Yeah, so basically, um, I set up Min's mind um, due to the fact that we're helping um, people basically with, with mental health. Um, I think there's a massive stigma around it. And um, I, I lost my mum nearly three years ago when I was 21. And um, it broke my heart and made me um, go through um, some some tough places and, um, and down the wrong path. And luckily for myself and my family now, I've got myself out of that place. And uh, I set up this Min's mind just to help people, especially if a big, tough rugby player like, like myself can, you know, hold their hand up and say they need help and they're struggling and and there are people out there who, who can help you. So basically I go into schools and just do a, a presentation about my life from my childhood to where I am now and, and overcoming the mental health and the, the, the feedback I get from it is it's just amazing. Like I have children coming up to me and they're saying, I, I never really speak to my mum now, but I'm going to try and um, get back in contact with her, and you know, just little things like that. And it just makes it just makes it so so worthwhile what I'm doing, and um, it helps me as well. Just just speaking, and I know if there is anybody out there listening into this podcast now who, who does struggle with mental health, then you know, don't don't be afraid to speak up, especially even more so during this pandemic. It, it can be testing, so you know, you're not the other person, and and there is help out there. Mm. Uh, and yet, if people want to find out more about you, you're speaking, there's the a website and a, a social media for it as well. Yeah, yeah. So my um, my website is www.minsmind.co.uk um, or com, might be try either one. And then um, on Twitter, it's just at minsmind. Um, I tend to p- push all my stuff out on Twitter earlier. Really. Um, but yeah, there's a, the website's there as well. Wonderful stuff. Brilliant stuff. Uh, well, that's it for this week's LS11 podcast. Thanks very much to our sponsors, The Athletic. Make sure, of course, uh, you get on with them and get your 50% off the annual subscription, seven-day free trial bar, getting the deal, theathletic.co.uk slash LS11. And, of course, the Social Maze, our huge Leeds fans offering social media management, and the Terrace offering football uh, quality football merchandise you won't get in your club shop. Uh, ben, thanks very much for this week are you up for a pub quiz this weekend ben or are you going to be waiting at some other random takeaway for a few hours <laughs> no no I, sh- I, sh- I should be available mate good news good news ryan are you going to be coming in on the uh, the pub quiz this week it depends um depends on what my schedule is like oh, my, yeah, on, oh, yeah. on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> thomas you're more than welcome as well to join us in on the pub quiz on saturday evening if you like oh tiger king i mean <laughs> yeah, like you'll be, yeah, get, get targeting on. You'll be, uh, you'll be very happy indeed. Thomas, thank you very much for joining us on LS11 this week. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Cheers for um for Ben and Ryan for making us feel so welcome. It's been an absolute honour to speak with you guys, and you know, keep doing your thing for this podcast. And hopefully, we get to see us get promoted this year. Eh? Nice one. Cheers. Thanks for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much, yeah. uh, Thomas. Top man. Top really man. appreciate that. Ryan, Ben, have a good week. And there you go, just, like, just in the background, they're trying to get a keep out of it in the garage <laughs> of the daughter. Um, but uh, that's it for LS11 this week. Make sure you like, subscribe, give us a five-star review, and uh, we'll be back at the same time next week. Thanks very much for listening and for downloading. This is... 